Hello, BookTube. When the pandemic really took off in 2020, and I, like everyone else, realized that a great deal of my reading would probably be in electronic form, especially for my own profession as a book reviewer, there was suddenly no one at the publishing houses. There was suddenly no publicist at their desk sending out books. None at all. And for the first months, well into the summer of 2020, there wasn't even anybody at the warehouses. So there wasn't any chance of, of books going out. And if the, the pandemic had struck in the 1980s instead of the 2020s, that would have brought reviewing almost to a standstill. But instead, in 2020, we had ebooks. Uh, and suddenly, myself and a whole bunch of other critics moved our reading over to ebooks and scrambled sometimes with the, the, the new way of doing that to review a book. It sometimes can be more difficult, sometimes much easier. I had already loved e reading before that change, but I did my a lot of my so called work reading shifted over to ebooks. Initially, all of it did. But then slowly, people started to realize that, you know, if you took precautions, wear a mask, wear gloves, you could send people back to warehouses. You might not be able to send them back to their offices to sit all day, but you could start to send out books. That would still be possible. And that has grown, as you've seen with my mail halls. They're inching up in volume as more and more people get vaccinated, for instance, in the United States, as more and more uh, people have the virus and live through it. So, you know, we're approaching herd immunity, so that sort of thing. More and more, this thing that terrorized us a year ago at this time is starting to, to become, starting to feel more and more like a background thing. Like another serious disease that you will get inoculated against and that you could get, but maybe you won't get it as strong as, as the original people who got it got it. And that means that maybe there'll be more of a traffic in printed books. But one way or another, in 2020, I fell in love all over again with even more intensity with reading ebooks. I still hauled printed books that whole time. And I still have a, a, a house entirely full of printed books. And I love them. But I really love e-reading e as well. I really do, especially for, for, for professional reasons. No matter what some of my more traditional colleagues in the reviewing field might have carped a year ago, there is nothing like the convenience of using an e-book to prepare a review. True, when I'm, when I'm reviewing a serious work of nonfiction, lots of details, lots of notes and references, those can be easier to navigate for me just because I'm old. <laughs> those can be easier to navigate for me if I have a printed book. But novels, and even those works of nonfiction, highlighting a work in an ebook is so much more efficient than doing it in, any, in a printed book. Because I can send my notes out, I can, I can highlight a passage, write a ton of notes, and then send them electronically to my email. With all of the identifying information, no need to go back to the text at all and hunt around for something. It's so much easier. Uh, so a large part of my, my so-called work reading has remained electronic. Uh, and I'm thinking from the, the impression I get from talking to a lot of you in emails is that a large chunk of your e reading in 2020 shifted to electronic. And so I have a bunch of Kindle questions for you. This is basically an email where I ask you a bunch of questions. Because I've recently, I mentioned on this channel that I got a Kindle Paperwhite. Uh, Oh, I watch a ton of YouTube review videos ahead of time telling me all about it, the difference between it and the Oasis, the Kindle Oasis, and thought this is the perfect one to get. I got a, the, the paper white and I got a cheap a cheap uh, smart cover that wakes it up when you open it up. Uh, it's, it's incredibly light. It's e-ink. It's an e-ink display, so it has an enormous battery life. You're not charging it every two days like an iPad. But it is a dedicated e-reading device. It isn't meant to do anything else. There's a primitive web browser on here, but it is clearly not meant to be used. You're, you really don't have, you don't have a camera on this, no, no email, no nothing like that. You are meant just to read on this device. And because it's e-ink, it's supposed, it's billed as being more immersive. It's less of an eye strain. It, it's more natural outside, for instance, if we could go outside, that sort of thing. Uh, once I had decided on a Kindle Paperwhite, I got it. I got a protective thing, started using it, really liked the experience. Read a few books on this thing. Uh, advanced copy. Because my uh, NetGalley account is set up to send eGalley copies directly to my email. And those show up on this device. No, no cross-pollination necessary. They just show up here. That became very convenient, but I started missing the connectivity. I started missing being able to use the same device to switch over to email or to quick fact check something on Wikipedia or something like that.
And although this has that capability when you're in Wi-Fi, it's not convenient. It's you're not meant you're you're as discouraged as you could be. I, and the more I I've used this thing, the more I thought that ability shouldn't be there at all. You shouldn't have the ability to go online with this thing. Because it's meant to isolate the experience of reading. It's meant specifically to to sort of shunt you into a non-distracted experience of reading. And as much as those ancillary uses on my iPad might be useful, might be very useful to check Wikipedia, might be very useful to see if the, uh, suddenly get to page 70 of a nonfiction work and think, does this author have a YouTube channel or have they ever done a TED talk? Although it might be useful to do that, I've realized that it's not necessary to do that, that the primary focus should be on the book itself. And just recently, <laughs> I know that I, I disappointed some of you who live and die on your Kindles. Good Lord, when I was putting out the question originally about getting a Kindle paperweight, I heard from so many of you saying, not just that you loved it, the testimonials went well beyond that. The testimonials went to, this has been a game changer for me, it's one of the greatest purchases that I have ever made. That was amazing to hear all of that. And I disappointed some of those people I know when I sort of put this in mothballs and took up my iPad again. Uh, but recently, I gave a little thought to that uh, because I had the typical experience. I was reading an ebook on my iPad, on the couch in the other room with the bean on my stomach, and did the usual thing. I encountered some thing, some detail in the book, and thought, okay, I have an, an internet need to check on this. And I did, and like happens to so many people, even people who tout their self-control like I do, I ended up going from that check to something else online and then a third thing online and it was about 20 minutes before i got back to the book which i realize is not a you know the stereotypical two-hour rabbit hole that people comment on but still i was shocked and when i was done with that book and when the bean and i had walked and i had poured out my heart to her and she didn't care <laughs> uh, i thought where is your kindle and i went and found it it was in my tech i have a, a drawer for technology then it's got a lot of stuff in it this kindle was in there i thought okay well it's been in there for a long time so what you need to do is dig through this octopus tangle to find the charging cord for this thing but it still had 70 percent power <laughs> in addition to having been there forever it was still just fine so i started reading on it again just recently just this week uh and really liked it i i may be it may be that i needed time to come around to this thing but i think for that initial first impression read-along of a book before I go at it again critically, I think this is probably the way to read. And that's where all my questions come in. This is basically a question asking all of you Kindle owners to tell me stories about your Kindle. Tell me about whether or not it actually does help you to isolate the reading experience and whether or not you like that. Is that maybe why you got your Kindle? What kind of Kindle do you have? This one has a nightlight, for instance. I can read, unlike many earlier editions of the Kindle, I can read on this you know, when the room is completely dark. I come in here. This this little room here doesn't appear to have a working electrical socket. So it makes the whole monkish experience of turning off all the electronics a lot easier because I don't think any of the wall sockets actually work. Which might end up being a problem at the height of summer when I want a window fan that works in there. But maybe not. We'll see. Uh, I don't particularly believe right now, personally, that it's ever going to get warm. Uh, but one way or another, when I shut off all the lights here, I have a couple of battery operated wall socket wall wall lights that I mounted. You just you tap it and it turns on. I have a couple of those, but I haven't used them. I haven't needed to because my iPad sheds light and so does this thing. Uh, but I want to hear your stories. A lot of you live by your Kindle. Is that right? Am I right in assuming that? That you you absolutely love it as a reading device, that it it doesn't feel like it feels personal. It, you you embrace it that much, even though it's made and marketed by Amazon that, that you you know we're not supposed to like. Uh, even though all, I know, recognize all of that stuff, but am I right in assuming that a lot of you really love your Kindles and that a lot of you have the paperweight? That you didn't want to do the very basic line of the Kindle, but you also didn't really think that, you know, paying the extra money for buttons on the Oasis was worth it, so you settled on the on the paperweight. I want to hear your stories. Uh, I want to see if any of, if any of the rest of you have specifically gone through this same journey that I'm, I think, going through right now, where I'm starting to like the idea of just being lost in a book without access to online for the first read-through. The second read-through that I do of a book that I intend to review is critical anyway. So th there's less immersion there anyway. But the first read-through, I'm starting to think there's no real reason why I can't do that on this unless it's a printed book. Unless it doesn't exist as an e-book. 
Uh, but I've been finding a lot. <laughs> this thing has thousands of books on it now. So basically, that's this video. I'm just I'm just indulging in the fact that we have the weirdest parasocial relationship on YouTube to simply ask you, tell me your Kindle stories. I want to hear them. Feel free to leave them in the comments down below. That'd be a lot of fun. Feel free to email me. Of course, you can email me about this or anything else. But I'm curious to know uh, if my rekindled, no pun intended, love for this device, I don't think it's isolated. I think a lot of you have felt it. And I'd be curious to know that. Uh, so there you go. That is that is another video for today. I'm feeling a little chatty, so I'm making a whole row of videos, but I'll try to stop. <laughs> Thank you, BookTube.